Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It is May 15th, 2018. And uh, with the recent summit on chemtrails, I figured I would break off some chemtrail knowledge. Um, a lot of people have been asking about this. As some of you may have noticed, I've taken a short break due to my health concerns. And I want to thank everybody for all their uh, emails, prayers, um, concerns. I appreciate that. Um, and I, and I'm really looking forward to getting this, uh, surgery behind me, but regardless, I will be taking uh, a little bit of a break this month and I will still be making some videos. I hope to get some of that in there for you guys. But with that being said, um, I'd like to thank all my Patreons over at, uh, patreon.com slash climate viewer. Um, you guys are, uh, definitely helping out. I appreciate that. Everything you're about to see is completely free of charge. Um, I do this for the love of it uh, and for the truth. So this is going to be one of those that's just about the facts. And I hope that uh, this is very informative. I'll try to keep it quick. So today we're going to really break down this whole chemtrail phenomenon. And to do that, you come over to climateviewer.com and click on geoengineering right here. And that'll bring you to my page, geoengineering and weather modification exposed. Scroll down to here to the Contrail and Do Cirrus page, the history of chemtrails. Click on that bad boy. It'll take you right here to the page that we're going to start with today. Cirrus clouds matter, the shady truth about contrails. Now, welcome Tracy. Welcome to everybody who's joined. Jerry Wallace, Joe Schmolgen, my homeboy, Tom Trial, Joyce Radley Bradford. Um, I see a whole lot of names I know. Michael Weiss, Diane, love you, mean it. Virginia, Michael, appreciate you guys being up late with me tonight. And thank you, Victor. So today we're going to go through, this is my fact page. This is kind of like a frequently asked questions kind of page. And generally speaking, a lot of this comes down to language. So you can get in this language pitfall where it's chemtrail versus contrail and everybody knows about the left right um, dialectic kind of thing and I hate that kind of thing because language does matter so what are we talking about today we are talking about chemtrails if you want to call them that contrails if you want to call them that but at the end of the day no matter what you call them whenever they fan out and block out the sun those are cirrus clouds so that's kind of important point you want to start with and most of this is slave speak read all about it on my propaganda page but if you're going to talk to scientists and you want to be taken seriously you're going to have to learn a little bit of scientific lingo and some of this stuff so i hope that this will be a crash course in that um what else are they called let's uh let's zoom in here for everybody playing along at home links are already in the details other names for these, persistent contrails, spreading contrails, contrail cirrus, contrail-induced cirrus, contrail-induced cloudiness, aviation-induced cloudiness, a aviation-induced cirrus, induced cirrus cloudiness, man-made clouds. I like to call them artificial clouds because that's the least ambiguous. They are, you know, they're not natural. They are artificial clouds. They're made by men. Um, me and my daughter, we call them plane farts. So pick your poison. Um, not going to read all this to you. You're going to have to do some reading if you want to actually get all the details. I'm going to go through this very quickly, but it really comes down to this. Everybody heard about COP21. Three articles here, very important. Leading climate scientists say Paris conference failed call for geoengineering. Academics call for geoengineering preparation in wake of Paris Agreement's deadly flaws. COP21 Paris deal too weak to prevent devastating climate change. Academics warn. So it seems that the Paris Agreement COP21 was a setup. And the setup was to legitimize geoengineering. And we all know how that rolls. So what makes a cirrus cloud? Well, um, mainly soot. So it wrapped in sulfuric acid loaded with na uh, metal nanoparticles. So if you really want to know about aluminum and barium and all that, um, this is the page for you because this is loaded with nothing but facts. Now this comes from the Air Force Research Lab. And you can see right here, fuel sulfur is responsible for rapid volatile particulate matter formula formation in the plume. 
and those particles are cloud seeds. Everybody's heard of cloud seeding. What makes a cloud? You got a speck of dust, you got water, ooh, let's get that in there, water vapor, and what makes them stick together? It is static. So you re really need three things, water, static, and dust. And the dust, sulfate aerosols create nucleation mode and coat soot particles. Sulfuric acid, guys, um, sulfur dioxide, sulfuric acid coats soot particles, which are loaded with metals. Those soot particles levitate. Ooh, now that's kind of creepy. Carbon black, the self-levitating cloud seed. Now, David Keith did something called photophoretic levitation of carbon black dust. And he talks about how carbon black dust can float up into the sky. And the reason why is because it absorbs solar energy. William Gray, um, back in 1976, talked about steering hurricanes with soot. Weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy. I made that infographic from a very lengthy PDF, but the long story short is, hey, we can spray this stuff out of planes in the carbon make section of the jet engine because it makes a lot of soot. Then you flash forward to 2008 in the Department of Homeland Security Hurricane Modification Workshop where Mosh Alamaro from MIT said the exact same thing. Hey, why don't we dump some soot into a hurricane? The sun will heat that soot and it can steer a hurricane. The military also in their, these are two FOIAs, Freedom of Information Act requests. You're not going to find these on any other website. I don't know why the chemtrail community doesn't latch onto this and run with it, but whatevs. Um, but this is from the U.S. Air Force. This is from the Navy and both talk about using carbon black soot to do everything that Air Force weather 2020, owning the weather in 2025 um, said that they would do. And they cite Vietnam and all this stuff. And then they go on to say how much it would cost. And this one's from uh, Phillips Laboratory Geophysics Directorate, and it is weather modification using carbon black. Carbon black is a another term for soot. It's uh, black carbon, carbon black, and soot. They are almost synonymous. There are slight differences in them, but regardless, um, you can see that from 1996 to 2004, operational capability by 2004. And then when we get to owning the weather in uh, 2025, right there, smack dab in the middle of it, carbon black dust, 2005, CBD, carbon black dust, technologies to be developed by the Department of Defense. So military likes carbon black dust. They like soot. Why? To increase precipitation, muddy dirt roads, flood fields, make troops uncomfortable, yada, yada, yada. And increase cirrus cloud cover. Deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance. Decrease light level for nighttime operations. So generally speaking, there's something you'd never think of for why they would want to make chemtrails. To block out satellites in space. Well, if you create a cloud deck, then you can't see the ground from space. Also, Decrease light level for nighttime operations. So make it darker so that our night vision goggles are more effective against enemies in Iraq. Like that actually happened. Um, scroll into the end of this little summary right here. Current capabilities as of 1997 create suppressed serious contrails. Big surprise. So the military is cool with it. They make them. Are serious clouds a bad thing? Um, yes. And if you read this, this is really creepy. This is from the IPCC, Clouds and Aerosol Supplementary Material in Climate Change 2013 Physics, a Physical Science Basis. And this is a leading report on Contrail Cirrus. What jumps right off the page at me are the names in bold. So while Ken Caldera says, chemtrails are not a thing, he actually wrote one of the major papers that the IPCC quotes on chemtrails. Also, Ulrich Lohman. Ooh, there's a new name that I, I probably should bold. Um, Philip Rosh, he's a weather modifier. Ben Kravitz, he's a geoengineer. Alan Robach, he's a geoengineer. True Story Elmo, she's a geoengineer. Whole bunch of damn geoengineers wrote the paper on Contrail Cirrus. Big surprise, not to me. Um, and the reason why is because Olivier Boucher was the lead author on this, okay? On this report right here. 
Very shortly after, he did like a 180 and said, contrails formed by aircraft can evolve into cirrus clouds, indistinguishable from those formed naturally. I think we've all seen that. These spreading contrails may be causing more climate warming today than all the carbon dioxide emitted by aircraft since the start of aviation. So they're heating up the planet to boot, not just blocking satellites, not just making it darker for the military at night, but they're also melting the poles. Big surprise, big surprise, not to me. Um, a single aircraft operating conditions favorable for persistent contrail, contrail formation appears to exert a contrail-induced radiative forcing some 5,000 times greater than the recent, recent estimates of the average persistent contrail radiative forcing from the entire civil aviation fleet. That means the IPCC got it really, really wrong. Um, pretty important stuff right there. So we got some stuff on how climate models suck, and it's pretty funny. Um, there's a black comedy in the GeoMIP, which is the geoengineering uh, multi inter blah, blah, blah. You read this stuff. Um, every time you touch it, it goes bang, and it doesn't work. And that's what they're talking about with their climate models, because they're always wrong, because they don't understand anything about aerosols, and that's why there's so many government agencies racing around to figure out this aerosol problem. So what are they doing about chemtrails? That's the most important part. And what you find real quick, um, especially on my FAQ at climateviewer.com slash cirrus clouds matter, is that for the longest time, these geoengineers have been basically saying, let's geoengineer the planet with jet fuel. I have reference after reference after reference after reference. These are scientific references, government, universities, yada, yada, yada. Use commuter aircraft doped with aerosol generators. Aircraft fuels doped with aerosol generators. That was William Cotton. I interviewed him at the weather modification conference this January. He said it at a weather modification conference. Dissolved or suspended in their jet fuel and later burned with the fuel. Reference right there, IOP.org, IOP Science. Options for dispensing gases from planes include addition of sulfur to the fuel, releasing the aerosol through the exhaust system of the plane. Boom. No problem, baby. Um, reference to that right there at uh, climate.rutgers.edu. Um, one exemplary technique may be via the jet fuel, as suggested by a prior work regarding metal particles. Patent. A potential delivery mechanism for seeding material is already in place. The airline industry. Yay! Stratospheric injection of sulfur species. Did I say that it was soot covered in sulfuric acid? That's how you inject sulfur into the stratosphere. Soot levitates upwards. Sulfuric acid goes with it. Metal particles are freed from it, make cirrus clouds. But the soot and the sulfur keep going up through the ozone layer. Sulfur was provided, um, <laughs> this is a great one. Detection of, for direct detection of total sulfuric acid has been achieved for the first time in the plume of a jet aircraft in flight. The measurements show the same sulfuric acid signatures for the, ca for the case when the sulfuric acid was injected directly into the exhaust, as Harold Say would like to say occurs. There's your evidence, brother man. Um, so spraying sulfuric acid directly into the exhaust or with the case when the sulfur was provided to the engine with fuel. Okay. Injection of H2SO4 sulfuric acid, a condensable vapor from an aircraft. Applying high fuel sulfur content at aviation cruise altitude combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel or biofuel at lower altitude cooled the planet and killed less people around airports. That's the newest plan. So these are the facts, people. These are indisputable facts with references. When I talk to scientists, they cower because I've read all these papers and I have memorized. I hope that you will too. The reason this matters is because that's exactly what they did and now they are testing this. So this is from something we're gonna cover a little later in the video called the access flights. Three different fuel types were discussed, low sulfur JP8, 
a 50-50 blend of JP8 and Camelina-based Hefa fuel, which is a biofuel, and JP8 doped with sulfur. Just like William Cotton said. Oh, what's this little guy right here? Stratospheric sulfate injections with commercial aircraft. Commercial aircraft could be used to deliver sulfate into the stratosphere by increasing fuel sulfur content in the flight altitude inter of intercontinental flights. Not surprising to this guy. And here's some of those experiments from the sulfur experiments from 1994 up to 1999. Not a surprise. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like this. This is uh, the actual biofuels testing at the alternative fuel effects on contrails and cruise emissions or access flights. And what they did was they basically flew behind a plane and they flew up into the chemtrails and there you see the particles they're collecting. Ooh, ultrafine particles. These are all the metal. All of this is on my site. Yes. Um, this is on Cirrus Clouds Matter. It's climateviewer.com slash Cirrus Clouds Matter. Uh, link in the details above in this video. Thank you for asking, Lisa. Um, so this is going on, you know, like why, while people just put their fingers in their ears, jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control. Okay, this is just from my fact. We haven't even left the page yet. U.S. Department of Agriculture Farm to Fly program. From the farming fields to the jet engines. Farm to Fly 2.0, Energy Department joins initiative to bring biofuels to the skies. There's the access flights, CAFI, the Commercial Aviation Alternative Fuels Initiative, ACRI, the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative. I interviewed the head of that department. I'm going to talk about it in just a minute. Project REACT 4C, reducing emissions of aviation and changing trajectories for the benefit of the climate. Omega, Center for Aviation Transport and Environment, Formation Flying Civil Air, Airliners, Flying Planes Like Birds to Save on a Gas Bill, no joke. Like planes flying like a V, like birds do, yeah, that's a thing. It's called the Climate Compatible Air Transportation System, or CATS, or Climate Optimized Routing of Flights, but basically Ulrich Schumann from the German DLR came up with this jewel right here. It's called the Contrail Cirrus Simulation and Prediction Tool. Welcome, Daddy. My daddy just joined the chat. Um, and this is a program that he came up with that says when the planes are going to make clouds all over the sky and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Good thing meaning, does it cool the planet because we can make a whole bunch of money? Jim Phelps, I will be talking about calcium. And you owe me an interview because you're the only one that ever talked about calcium and with a straight face. And it's the most important thing that we could possibly talk about. But not this video. Um, Cirrus cloud seeding. So really we're at a point now where they're talking about, um, yeah, Jim Phelps, everybody friend him up. He knows what he's talking about. Um, Cirrus cloud seeding and this contrail Cirrus prediction tool is the future. That's what they're talking about right now, how to control the climate using contrail Cirrus. Cirrus clouds matter more than geoengineering, as we will see shortly. So what is that? Um, Cirrus cloud seeding, it's, uh, you know, bismuth triiodide to melt the chemtrails away. Seeding via commercial airliners? Mmm, creepy. Advantage, seeding aerosol residence times relatively short in the troposphere. Drawback does not address ocean acidification. Why? Because it's still putting sulfuric acid all in the sky. Acid rain, people. Acid rain. Way too much to cover. So, the question is, to sulfur or not to sulfur? And that's really where we're at. So I went and I did a little hearing at the EPA. You can watch the videos on this, but this is Ulrich Schumann once again, summing it up for us very um, eloquently. At the 2010 ICAO Colloquium on Aviation and Climate Change, he said, we need to have less soot emissions because soot is what makes these clouds, less warming and more cooling contrails. This is no longer a conspiracy, people. This is an active geoengineering experiment. 
um, as we will see later in this video. Predictable for operational planning and predictable how with his little tool that we just showed you up here that he created. So that's how they predict for operational um, you know, planning right there. Less warming, more cooling contrails. Um, link right there. So are they melting the poles? You bet your uh, bottom dollar they are. And that's not something new because for 100 years, they've talked about melting the poles. Um, so the fossil fuel industry, the, the people who supply jet fuel want to melt the poles. Why? Because they want to get to the oil and gas at the poles. And that has been a 100 year agenda. It has not changed. In fact, the only difference between what the fossil fuel industry wants in melting the poles and what the IPCC is saying is just some language, a little bit of speak. So 1.5 degrees Celsius should heat the poles enough for them to melt it and get to the oil and gas. And the IPCC says, let's limit the heating to two degrees. Meaning we still want the 1.5 because that'll melt the poles, but we don't want to go over two because that could be hell on earth. A um, couple references on that magnifying glass in space called the burning glass to melt the poles, blowing up nuclear bombs to melt the poles, metal rings in space to melt the poles. But this one's really particularly interesting. 1966 Committee on Atmospheric Sciences and National Research Council stated in Weather and Climate Modification Problems and Prospects that supersonic transports could double the concentration of water vapor naturally present and a five-fold increase in stratospheric water vapor alone would raise the temperature of the Earth's surface by 1.6 degrees. So just the water vapor that all the chemtrail debunkers say is not a problem, it's just water vapor, is a big freaking problem. Um, because water vapor is part of the biggest problem. And it would raise it just enough to cook the poles. So water vapor plus making serious clouds, a bad thing. Very, very, very bad thing. And that's what people don't want to talk about. Cloud blanket warms up melting ice cap. Greenland ice sheet melts more when it's cloudy. These are from scientific journals. This is the original um, paper right here. Not going to click it. Not enough time. Cloud enhance, clouds enhance Greenland ice sheet melt water runoff. But have you seen this? The new Cold War. Drilling for oil and gas in the Arctic. The new Cold War. Russia sends troops and missiles to the Arctic as Putin stakes claim on region's oil and gas reserves. Counting the cost, the new Cold War, the race for Arctic oil and gas. Really? So which is it? Are we trying to save the poles? Are we trying to um, fix the ice or what? America falling behind in the new Cold War over Arctic oil. You got to be shitting me. I mean, how many times are they going to say Cold War? Well... The guys at the Arctic Methane Emergency Group who are trying to save the Arctic also say the Arctic Natural Gas Extraction, Liquefaction, and Sales, or ANGELS proposal. Let's frack the Arctic to save us from methane. Oh my god. That's chicken before the egg. And if you go to the American Ke Chemical Society, um, they will say it's water vapor, not CO2. Stupid. But this is where all the oil is. This is what they're trying to get after melting the poles. So our jet aircraft geoengineering our skies, you bet your ass. Um, Chuck Long from NOAA's Earth Systems Research Lab, C-Res, dropped a bombshell when he said airline, airplane contrails may be creating accidental geoengineering. And what he's talking about, unfortunately, isn't even the cirrus clouds. He's talking about making the skies white. So if you look up and you see blue overhead and then you look at the horizon and you see white, that white is what we're talking about. Long suggests that a high altitude ice haze create, created by water and other emissions from aircraft is responsible. Quote, I'm talking a sub-visual contrail generated haze of ice, which we do not classify as a cloud, but gives the blue sky a whitish tint. Now, a lot of you in California have complained about it. I've seen it myself where I go out some days and it's so damn bright, I can't even go outside without my shades. 
your future so bright. <laughs> well, that's what they call accidental geoengineering, but we're they're still not acknowledging the cloud poop, the airline farts, and all that. Um, so this is no accident any longer. Um, we'll we'll get into that another day. And I hear this all the time. Why don't we ban geoengineering? Global march to ban geoengineering. We should ban geoengineering. Heads up, geoengineering is already illegal. It is banned. The Convention for Biological Diversity in 2012 said that no climate-related geoengineering activities that may affect biodiversity take place. Period. Boom. Of course, the um, United States did not sign this agreement. Just a heads up. So, geoengineering is already banned. Weather warfare is already banned. NMOD Convention, 1978. I talk a lot about that. You can see my NMOD solution to fixing NMOD on climateviewer.com slash NMOD. But regardless, geoengineering already banned. Bans don't work. This is why I'm talking about my NMOD solution. Just a heads up. What the UN ban on geoengineering really means. Link there. At UN convention, groups push for geoengineering moratorium. Countries agree to ban geoengineering. It happened. Surprise! <laughs> People. Are serious clouds filled with metal? Yes. Um, even if you go to the IPCC reports, they've got a section on aviation metals. You will see that they say aircraft jet and en engines also directly emit metal particles like aluminum, titanium, chromium, iron, nickel, barium are estimated to be present in the parts per billion by volume level at nozzle exit planes, CIAP 1975, and these two dorks, 1975. Can you believe that in the 2013 paper, 2015 paper, wherever I got this from, that they're still saying this? That they're estimated to be in the parts per billion. And it's based on two guesses from 1975. That's freaking pathetic. So I went searching and thanks to my email train from some friends, I got these two papers. And this is from Ulrich Lohman, a name I mentioned earlier. The detected metallic compounds were all internally mixed with soot particles. Uh-oh. I was right when I said that at the EPA hearing in 2015. The most abundant metals in the exhaust were chromium, uh, iron, molybdenum, uh, sodium, calcium, aluminum, and the list goes on. So, also detected vanadium, barium, cobalt, copper, nickel, lead, mag magnesium, manganese, silicon, titanium, zirconium. All of these freaking metals are in the soot coming out of planes. So then I got a paper from the United States military. Link to DTIC.mil right there. Um, and I created this little infographic. And shout out to Jim Phelps. There's your calcium brother, man. We're going to talk about it. I should have put an arrow on that one. I mean, like it stuck in my gut when I saw it. I was like, holy crap, that number is so much larger than all the other ones that people bitch about online. I should have put an arrow on it. But I see the error of my ways now. And we will have a whole special episode on calcium in the near future. Oh, by the way, David Key switched from saying, let's do aluminum, titanium, geoengineering to using calcium. Because it's good for your teeth. But regardless, um, there's your aluminum. There's your barium. There's your titanium. It's in the jet fuel. Jet A. JP5 is a gasoline-based. JP8 is a diesel-based. When they switch from uh, gasoline to diesel, aluminum tripled. Same with you know sulfur and the list goes on. Wow, titanium went from 35 parts per billion to 1,056 parts per billion. But the biggest one being, of course, calcium went from 5,000 parts per billion to 31,000 parts per billion or 31 parts per million. Mm, now we're getting interesting. Um, but let's not get too deep into that. So there's also, um, I don't just talk about additives, despite what you may have heard on some stupid forums from people who say they can smell chemtrails. But if we want to talk about additives as well, 
Spray visualization of alternative aviation turbine fuel embedded with metallic nanoparticles. Shout out to Pete Ramone. Nano man! Because nanoparticles are now being added to jet fuel to increase their fuel performance. Just like, you know, your, your motor heads who like to put the fuel exhaust, you know, additives in their cars to make them more horsepower. Energetic nanoparticles as fuel additives that enhance performance in propulsion systems. And the list goes on. So they say right here, J-Trofa biodiesel, a uh, fuel derived from crushed seeds of J-Trofa plant, water and a surfactant, then blended in different proportions of alumina nanoparticles. Why is that important? Because nanoparticles should be used judiciously because they tend to entrain in human bodies. But let's put them into jet fuel anyway. <laughs> Um, and here is an actual photo from an article called Lead Line Clouds of a piece of soot with lead in it. So you guys know I'm not making this up, and that is a nanoparticle. So read all about it. That's in that section. On off chemtrail, um, cirrus clouds, is this possible? Yes. Um, I actually need to update this section right now because now that I've got all this new stuff, um, I'm going to turn... I know how to turn a chemtrail on and off using an electronic control unit. It's on weather modification history. Hell, let's bring it up just so everybody sees that I'm not BS. And go down here to the end. Let's go up here to doped jet fuel. It's like right around here. Now, let's just search for it. Doped jet fuel. There, boom. All right. So, for those, I'll drop this one in there since it's not in the details. Everybody playing along at home. Here's how you turn a chemtrail on and off at will even remotely because if you have guys at the FAA who can do this um, with a flick of a computer they can do that and here are your patents so this is how you turn a chemtrail on and off using jet fuel patent 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 there's one there's two and finally the coup de gras control unit and method for controlling the supply of a vehicle with multiple fuels like biofuels and doped fuel with sulfur. And you do that with the jet fuel electronic control unit with the flick of a switch from a computer at the FAA's next gen transportation system using the aviation environmental design toolkit and Ulrich Schumann's contrail series prediction tool. They can change from one fuel to another at will using a control unit. Boom, boom, boom. And the pilot doesn't even have to know it. So everybody doesn't have to be in on this thing. Surprise. Not to me. Back to the story. We still haven't even left the damn page. I'm going on way too long on this. Can high bypass jet engines make clouds? I hear this a lot. High bypass jet you know, engines cannot make clouds. Wrong. They can actually make more clouds. Newer engines extract more heat from and perform more work, have cooler exhaust, re higher relative humidity. So, and again, there's Ulrich Schumann. If you want to know a lot about chemtrails, start reading Ulrich Schumann. The guy's been, he is the top researcher on the planet on this topic. Contrail induced cloudiness may increase on par or more rapidly than CO2 emissions. He said this in 2000, then in 2010 said we need to make less warming, more cooling contrails. And of course you can see them flying behind a plane, sampling chemtrails right there. And are jet engine emissions dangerous? This is the last in my thing. Well, you know, a, fly, a high flying theory on the acid rain problem. There's something you don't hear about anymore. When I was in school, I heard about acid rain every single damn day. Don't hear about that anymore. Um, but what's in it? There's jet fuel additives. Biocides. They kill microorganisms growing in the gas tank, also known as humbugs. Um, Biobore, cath cathon. Um, I've got material safety data sheets. This stuff will creep you out if you go into this section. This was the, the hardest crap to find, period. And it took me forever to find all of this. But when you start going through just the additives... And looking at the material safety data sheet, here's what you see over and over again. Trade secret. So profits over planet and people, as my friend Max Mogram at Wake Up News likes to say, profits 
over planet and people. And that's just the case, guys. You know, trade secret, don't need to tell you, you know, if I tell the EPA, well, I mean, high tech 580, it's proprietary. There's another word for you, proprietary. I don't want to tell you what I just put in that jet tank because it would, my competitors would steal it. So can you imagine all of the, you know, trouble that would cause them? So you start looking through these things and you see things like naphthalene, which is a Sarah 313 chemical, which means that it's a cancer causing, it's a circle of chemical. It's cancer causing chemicals after cancer causing chemical burn out of the back plane, Sarah three right there and the names of them fuel icing system icing inhibitors um i didn't mention that it's corrosion inhibitors lubricity improvers that's one type of additive and these are all the different names and material safety data sheets i could find couldn't even find msds on some of these it's so hard to find um and i own the internet i could find anything so if i can't find it boy you gotta send it my way i will put it right on the page EGME and DG, EGME, um, diethylene, glycol, methyl S, F, ether, um, all kind of creepy stuff. Fuel system icing inhibitor keeps ice from growing in the fuel t in the fuel lines. Static dissipator additives like status 450, trimethyl benzene, another Sarah 313 cancer causing chemical, naphthalene, and that also toluene. Toluene, um, solvent naphtha, dinonaphthalene, sulfonic acid, denza, or barium. Don't just spray them, bury them. And then the military has something called a plus 100 additive, hits, high thermal stability additive, spec 88Q462, which is trimethylbenzene again, naphthalene, and trade secret ingredient 561, trade secret ingredient 428. And the list goes on. Um, many different additives. I got a nice little sheet from ExxonMobil on additives and aviation fuel. You can see the type of fuel up here. This is Jet A, Jet A1, F44. That's the military, so defense standard F44, F40. And the list goes down here. Which additives are supposed to be in there, which are mandatory. Um, and, the, and the list goes on. So click on that. Link to high resolution version right there. And finally, we're at the bottom of the, just the frequently asked questions page, Serious Clouds Matter. So I went and basically the EPA begged me not to come have a hearing. And then we had a hearing and I brought some of my friends. And everything I said in that hearing stands true today. So what happened? The EPA agreed to limit greenhouse gases coming out of airplanes and do nothing about making clouds every day and spewing metal nanoparticles every day. They want, they cared about CO2 and nitrous oxide. And I said, screw that. We care about planes making clouds and putting metal nanoparticles in the sky in 2015. So they said, yeah, we'll limit greenhouse gases and make Obama and the ICAO and the COP21 crowd happy. Then the White House, Obama White House, releases the Federal Alternative Jet Fuel Research and Development Strategy, which China, the U.S., and Europe pledge support for Global Aviation Emissions Pact using biofuels for contrail control. Greens move to dismiss EPA lawsuit over airplane emissions. So that really sucked. And what did they do? The same people who brought this lawsuit on to begin with, um, then switched, did a 180, and they're like, NGO slam UN aviation agency for plan, uh, plan for biofuels. So now they realize the error of their ways and that growing gasoline is not going to solve this problem. So conclusion, serious clouds matter. So I got three articles here. We're not going to do the bottom one here, but I want to just hit the main points of this because I don't think pe most people know this. So I mentioned the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, ACRI. I interviewed the head of that department. His name is Dr. Rangasai Halthori, and he said this, we want to make clouds by day, none by night. And that really stuck in me. So what's he talking about? I got some, uh, you know, one-line debunkers a la Mick West. You know, this is just hilarious. If you want to read this, it's pretty funny. 
Um, so I, you know, like chemtrail debunkers say contrails are just condensation, just harmless water vapor. Response, condensating on what? Answer, cloud seeds like aerosols or soot and metal nanoparticles. This matters a lot. So when they say it's just water vapor and it's just condensation, you look them dead in the eye and say, condensating on what? What does it condense on? Because that's what matters. Um, so just, I, I'm going to skip all this and just show you the highlights of this article. Because it's kind of fascinating. So, Mystery of Point Augusta Sky Trails, 1948. Can you believe it? 1948. Plain Vapor Trails, 1951. So this is not a new phenomenon. Jet Trails, Dim Sun, Palm Springs, Gripes. December 1958. That basically, you know, they're blocking out the sunlight. 1958. So this has been happening forever, ever and ever. I mean, since they started flying planes, they've been screwing this up. New fuss raised over Jet Trails, 1958. This is from Oregon. And, you know, but the Air Force so far is flabbergasted. <laughs> um, Dominic actually uh, from Weather Mod History actually found one where the Air Force said, get over it. I should have had that paper ready. That would have been really funny about now. But this is the part most people don't know. So in 1970, the state of Illinois and New Jersey sued over chemtrails. No joke. You cannot make this stuff up. And it says like this. Um, the government will tell the nation's 43 commercial airlines Tuesday that they must end pollution of the skies with jet engine smoke. Chemtrails 1970 was called Pollution of the Skies with jet engine smoke. And they got sued for it. Two two states, Illinois and New Jersey, sued over chemtrails in 1970. And nobody knows this. The smoke that pours from jet engines is caused by incomplete fuel burning of the standard combustor. The redesigned custer, combustor eliminates smoke plumes almost completely, federal specialists say. So... Just like my EPA lawsuit, they were under the gun. They were getting sued. And the Secretary of Transportation, John A. Volt, you know, mediated. And he said, um, yeah, early jet made black soot and are not white. Um, they still make black soot. Soot is still black. And if anybody's seen when the sun goes down, all the white clouds suddenly turn black, you know what I'm talking about. Um, lit from above, lit from below, but whatevs. Appreciate you, Jim Phelps, still. Um, so they said they were going to create a new combustor that would reduce particulate emissions from planes by, wait for it, 70% right there. It would reduce particulate emissions by 70%. Guess what they're saying today? NASA study confirms biofuels reduce jet engine pollution. By wait for it, using biofuels to help power jet engines reduce particulate emission in their exhaust by as much as 50 to 70 percent. History repeating itself. It's right there in the deets. You can read the article yourself. Using biofuels, 70 percent emission in particulate emissions won't make a bit of a damn difference, but that's the point of what I'm showing you right now. So they said they would reduce their 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 jet smoke in the skies. They would get rid of chemtrails by redesigning the combustor. They call them burner cans. All this is history. You cannot make this up. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. That's our slogan over at weathermodificationhistory.com. So please also dig into that. Um Point being, they said they were going to redesign the combustor cans, the burner cans. This would get rid of the smoke in the skies and get rid of the chemtrails. But Illinois, sorry, buddy, 1981, this is 11 years later, 
Jet vapor trails altering the climate over Chicago. Jet changing, jets changing climate for good or ill. Still making clouds. Still blocking out the skies over Illinois and New Jersey. Still to this day. So they skirted the law. They got out of their lawsuit. And they were allowed to continue making clouds. That's important. Moving along. A whole lot of history in here on, you know, some stuff from, you know, 9-11 report. I'm not going to go into all this because it'd take forever. Um, but this is where that 5,000 times greater thing came. And what you see right here in this little photo, I'll blow it up for you. Um, this is a E3 AWACS plane circling. You can see the circles at first. Making a bunch of contrail cirrus clouds. And covering almost all of the UK with that. That's where those quotes came from in 2008. Um, during the Iceland volcano that blew up. So this is because all other planes were grounded. Just like at 9-11. And they only had one plane in the sky to really judge this on. So they said, holy you know, dog shit, bad man. That one plane made that much clouds. How many clouds are these planes making? There's 110,000 flights per day. So that's a big deal. So let me zoom that back down. But regardless, um, read all about it. And then the BBC says this, and they say that. And Anyway, interview with Dr. Rangasai Halthori. You can read it on Scribd. I got a copy of it right there. And that's where the guy said, hey, we want to make clouds by day, none by night. And that really got me thinking about it. I was like, what the hell is going on here? I mean, you know, why do they want to make them by day and none by night? And it really comes down to cirrus cloud seeding and this whole plan to use biofuels to cool during the day but then get them to go away at night so cooling during the day everybody's probably heard the term geoengineering solar radiation management or srm now that's blocking incoming sun incoming but what happens when the sun's already heated the ground and now that heat wants to go back to space they call that earth radiation management or erm surprise this was news to me like last year so solar radiation management block incoming sunlight with cooling contrails making cirrus clouds um and ship tracks that are loaded with sulfur because sulfur is what volcanoes do and they cool the planet the problem is if those clouds stick around at night, they trap heat like a blanket and they heat up the planet. Whether, you know, whether that's true or not, I don't know because all of their climate models suck anyway, but that's beside the point. Missing the point. So solar radiation management versus earth radiation management. How do we let all that heat back into space? Well, we got to melt the clouds away. So that's where this whole cirrus cloud seeding thing comes up. And it looks like this. Cirrus cloud thinning is another term that they use. And the idea is to make those clouds thinner so that the long wave radiation can return to space. If you guys don't know this stuff, then you're not going to be educated. You're not going to be able to argue with scientists. You're not going to be able to make a difference. That's why I beat this dead horse into the ground. Um, by the way, I heard none of this at their most recent chemtrail summit. It's unfortunate. Um, and I will be watching that in graphic detail and going through it pretty shortly. Um, but regardless, I go into a whole lot of things right here. Um, some of those quotes I've already mentioned to you. But, you know, clouds are the main driver of climate on Earth. And if you guys haven't heard of Heinrich Svensmark, um, The Cloud Mystery, great documentary there. Um, Svensmark's really got his uh, feces consolidated. The relation between cosmic ray flux and cloud cover should also be of importance in explanation of the correlation between solar cycle length and global temperature that has been found. So in climate change and heating the planet, it goes like this. The sun, galactic cosmic rays, cosmic ray flux, which create clouds, clouds, water vapor, then greenhouse gases, period. Nobody can argue this. Now, of course, a bunch of technocrat IPCC fools who bought it hook, line, and sinker will, but anybody with some common sense and can read the internet 
would uh, know that already. So Jasper Kirkby dropped a bombshell, and you can read that also on here on uh, CERN cloud conundrum, Earth not warming as quickly, climate models super wrong. I'll drop that one in the deets for you guys. Um, but he basically says this, that you know he took a cloud chamber and some you know, coniferous plants, and he made clouds with just some cosmic rays, some water vapor, and some coniferous plants. And what he said was, which means Earth was not warming up so much in response to increased greenhouse gases alone. In other words, Earth is less sensitive to greenhouse gases than previously thought. This is 2016. Boom. This really does touch on the Gaia hypothesis. He says it's a beautiful mechanism for trees to control their environment. But wait, we're cutting down trees. And that's bad, bad, bad. I just did a video called Plant Trees or, or Geoengineering Will Kill Billions. I hope you guys will check that out. Shout out to Judith Curry for uh, writing this, The Cloud Climate Conundrum. I called it the Contrail Conundrum at uh, the EPA hearing I went to in 2015. Um, more links on that stuff, and you've seen this. But let's go right to the heart of the matter. This is what Dr. Rangasai Halthori from the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative said, and this is what Ken Caldera said. And this is it in a nutshell in two damn quotes. Contrails during the day cause cooling because of reflecting sunlight back into space. During the night, they trap infrared heat, causing heating. So it's a balance between the two time intervals. We would like, which goes to the intent thing. This is intentional. Now it's not an accident. Once you say that you want something, that you want less warming, more cooling contrails, that you take control of what used to be pollution, it is now intentional. And that is provable in a court of law that this is geoengineering. This is an active experiment, period. We would like to have more CICs, contrail-induced cirrus clouds, during the day and none during the night. Straight from the head of the FAA. Um, so imagine my lack of surprise when I read this, dated July 21st, 2017. This was uh, what was called Cocktail Geoengineering by Ken Caldera and Company. And I read the whole paper, and this is the interesting part. If the time and place for seeding, cirrus cloud seeding, which is what this article is about, if the time and place for seeding is selected with care, the climate effect of cirrus thinning can be enhanced. For that, only the long wave warming effect of cirrus clouds should be targeted. Earth radiation management. And their solar effects should be avoided. Solar radiation management. Make clouds by day. Solar radiation management. Melt them by night. Earth radiation management. This can be achieved as seeding is limited to high latitude winters or nighttime seeding. And that is from the paper, Climate Change and Geoengineering, Artificially Cooling Planet Earth by Thinning Cirrus Clouds. Cirrus clouds matter, people. Cirrus Lee. So here's another one, a cirrus cloud climate dial. Sedimenting ice crystals remove water vapor, the most important natural greenhouse gas from the upper, upper troposphere. Boom, suddenly they're talking about, oh, water vapor. Now, ooh, it's a big deal. Another thing they said, if this is the, the you know, just bullet to the head. If cirrus thinning works, it should be preferred over methods that target changes in solar radiation, such as stratospheric aerosol injections. So after calling everybody on the internet tinfoil hatters, after saying all of this shit, they finally admit that if they just melt the clouds away, that they'll never even need to do solar radiation management with stratospheric aerosol injections of sulfur. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Bismuth triiodide has been suggested by Trude Story Evmo, the chick that also co-authored the report on um, the IPCC stuff on contrails with Ken Caldera and company. Bismuth triiodide has been suggested as a non-toxic and affordable substance for serious seeding. That's what's in Pepto-Bismol, by the way. Um, other substances such as mineral dust should work as well, like David Keese aluminum nanoparticle idea. 
Uh, a small scale deployment of Cirrus cloud seeding could therefore be envisioned, for instance, in the Arctic to avoid further melting of the Arctic sea ice. Governance of such local climate engineering might be easier to achieve. Why? Because there's something called the Arctic Council. And they could create noctilucent clouds and a whole bunch of other scandalous shit up in the North Pole. And nobody would ever know it because the Arctic Council don't really talk about this in public but regardless there's the paper on that and we're done with this article so why am i why am i summing all this up because nobody's talking about any of this it's only found on my website and until i start to see it resonate i'm gonna beat a dead horse and i'm tired of the fear porn artist running away with the ball and driving the narrative when all the facts are right there in your face people we need to do something about this serious cloud problem. And unless you take this seriously and get educated on the science behind it. Oh, wait, I just wrote this one over on MIT's Climate X. So I went over to MIT EDU and I wrote an article called Accidental Geoengineering with Ship Tracks and Contrails. Because now it's time to take the fight to those people. And you know what? It got over a thousand shares before they removed the share number and reset it to zero. <laughs> Must suck, MIT. Must suck. But regardless, I got a great series of videos over on my YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube at Jim Lee. Um, top of every page on climateviewer.com. Just scroll up here. Here's my YouTube. Click on that bad boy. Take you over here. Check out my playlist as well. You can see me talking with Max Bliss. Plant trees or geoengineering will kill billions. There's the article on that. My interviews from the latest weather modification conference where I talked to the people who did all this. Um, but why am I showing you this? Because here's the videos on the access flight. Alternative fuel effects on contrails and cruise emissions. This is where they're testing the biofuels. Um, I got several videos on that. First jumbo jet um, flight using biofuel right there. Onboard 747's record-breaking biofuel flight. First interna international commercial flight with biofuels. United Eco Skies, LAX Biofuel Initiative. United Eco Skies, the first scheduled U.S. biofuel flight. First T-45 Go Shock flight using biofuel blend. Navair, there's a Harrier jet using biofuels. Military's in on this thing. Hey, even my favorite plane in the military, the A-10 Warthog, using biofuels. Air Force is going green with biofuels. Osprey goes green with biofuels. Aren't those things tipping over and blowing up all the time? Oh, you might want to look into something called fame contamination. Fatty acid methyl ester. It's where biofuels are causing engines to flame out. Go look it up. Lots of engine flame outs happening now. <clears throat> Didn't we just have an engine blow up and throw a whole bunch of metal through the window and suck somebody out the window? Oh, there's another source of atmospheric metal we don't want to talk about. So, great video at the end of that. How jets make metal clouds. Just the facts. From yours truly. Ending with fear and loathing in the chemtrail community. Because if you go to YouTube nowadays, what you're going to see is a whole bunch of damn videos saying that there's no such thing as jet fuel. <laughs> Why? Because I'm winning, people. Winning like a boss. So go enjoy the jet fuel hoax videos. Um, it's not going to work. It's not going to work, fear porn industry. Give up. So this is the access flights. They started around 2013. That's why I interviewed the doctor over there. Um, here's a, a nice little spreadsheet on this from... NASA, the German DLR, National Research Council of Canada. Alternative fuel effects on contrails and cruise emissions access to flight experiments where they talk about, you know, how does it affect the environment? And what you see is contrail series is like off the charts. They have no idea how much is um, actually caused by planes, as they say right here. As you can see, their little stupid chart. Linear contrails, only this much, but induced cirrus cloudiness, big line, big line. Carbon dioxide, itty bitty line, big line for clouds. This is the, the, the real nuts and butts of what's going on. They don't want you to know this. This is where I got that slide on that by high bypass engines do that. 
Lots of details in this thing. Great slideshow. It's in the details. You guys check it out. But these access flights already happened, came and went. So what's going on today? Let's get to that because it's way more important. Um, they've now moved on. This was the end of that study where they made the same statement, 70% reduction, just like when they got sued for chemtrails in 1970. So now they're on to the next um, series of tests, and this is where we're at today. NASA and DLR investigate the impact of aviation on the climate, joint flight tests on alternative fuel emissions. Alternative fuels equals biofuels equals biofuels for contrail control. That's what's going on today. And if you don't know about all this stuff, you need to catch up quickly. And if you hear people that just don't want to hear this or telling you that jet fuel has nothing to do with this, um, give them a swift education because NASA takes international aviation research to the max with ND Max. Um, while I was at the weather modification conference in Austin, Texas, NASA invited press to California to tour one of their test planes for these biofuel flights. It's like they knew my ass was in Texas and couldn't be there for this. So they were like, do it now. Let's invite the press now because there's no way in hell Jim will show up and really ask the hard questions. Really sucked for me. Um, but regardless, read all about it, and they even talk about it here. Previous research flight programs were led by NASA over California during 2013-2014 called Access 1 and 2. And now we're on to the new one. What is the new one called? IndyMax, previously known as ECLIF-2, or the NASA DLR Multidisciplinary Airborne Experiments, Emissions and Climate Impact of Alternative Fuel. And a whole lot of pictures on that. You can see the little sampling equipment where they fly behind on the chemtrails. And here's them fueling up the tanks and hooking up all their equipment and testing out these biofuels. And then just going right up in the air and flying right behind them with a bunch of NASA guys going, Hey, how does this work out? Did we make cooling contrails or not? Because we really want to know. And there's the flights right there. So ND Max and ECLIF2, that's the current series of tests they're doing on these biofuels for contrail control. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All of this can be found at the top of climateviewer.com. Simply click on the little mobile menu and click on geoengineering. That'll take you over here to Cirrus Clouds Matter, and that's your jump off point. At the bottom of the Cirrus Clouds Matter page, you can see all of my articles on chemtrails and contrails and the like by clicking right here. It'll take you to the artificial clouds section, or you can just go to the menu up here at the top, archives, and click on artificial clouds. That's where I keep all my articles on the chemtrails. But you have been schooled on biofuels for contrail control. I hope this has been a very informative video. I'd like to remind everybody that everything that I do is free of charge. Um, I'm only supported by my Patreons and the occasional uh, PayPal donation. If you can uh, give, I really appreciate it. Um, and again, thanks to all the everybody who sent me uh, prayers and suggestions, advice, etc. Um, on my upcoming surgery. I'm going to be taking it easy this month. Um, I will be back, you know, as often as possible. But I do need to get well and, and be prepared for this upcoming surgery. So remember, everybody, cirrus clouds matter. I hope that this has been an informative video. And I hope that you guys will um, spread this around, um, especially to the places where they don't like to talk about jet fuel. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, God bless you. And remember to attack ideas, not people.